Hello, how are you doing? Paul here and today I'm going to get stoned and by that I mean visiting some stones. Firstly, Castle Rig Stone Circle here just outside of Keswick and just after this I'm going to head down into the Borrowdale Valley and take a look at the Bowder Stone. This has got to be one of the most beautiful stone circles in the country. Just look at the location, look at the view, absolutely fantastic. The sun popping through the clouds there, absolutely gorgeous. This stone circle is one of the oldest stone circles in Britain. It's something like 5,000 years old, or believed to be 5,000 years old. The heaviest of these stones weighs something like 16 tonnes, or is estimated to weigh 16 tonnes. Nobody's actually weighed it, obviously. And uh, the tallest stone in the circle is 2.3 metres. As you can see, very, very popular with photographers, especially with that backdrop. Absolutely amazing backdrop of the hills and the fells. And if you can get the sun coming through, just like you can there, it's absolutely amazing. Depending on what you read, the stone circle has either 38 or 40 stones. And legend has it that no matter how many times you count the stones, you'll always end up with a different number. Um, Perhaps I should try it. Right, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try and count how many stones there are. Just a second. Right, here we go. If I start there and go around, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 45. No, that can't be right. Try that again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 46. There's only supposed to be about 38 or 40. I haven't got that yet. One more, I'll try going the other way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, It's an interesting little rectangular bit of stones here in the centre, which uh, experts believe was added at a later date for some reason. That reason unknown. Who knows? Who knows? Talking thousands of years ago. In fact, the whole idea behind the stone circle is unknown, really. They think it's some kind of maybe meeting place for religious or trading purposes. But nobody really knows. And uh, this site has, hasn't been um, excavated like a lot of stone circle sites has. Nobody's really done any excavations here to, uh, to dig down and find anything. Although I did read somewhere that there was some sort of Stone Age axes found nearby which may or mean may not mean anything that'll do for our visit to castle rig stone circle absolutely beautiful up here this morning well worth a visit not much car parking here if you do come and it's a very narrow road to get here so do be careful but definitely well worth the visit especially on a day like today let's get back in the car now head down the Borrowdale valley and go and see the Bowder stone so i started at the top end of Derwent water at um castle rig stone circle I've now came to the bottom end of Derwent Water, I'm going to have a look at the Bowder Stone, and uh, I've hit across a small problem. 
um, I've came to a National Trust car park and the National Trust, a lot like the National Park Authority, charge a small fortune for parking and they're both guilty of the same thing. It's not the cost of the parking that's the problem, it's that they don't have ticket machines that accept credit cards. So you have to have the right amount of change. Now, this car park's four pounds. I didn't, I haven't got four pounds uh, in change. I was hoping to be able to use a card. Most places take cards these days. And um, it's like I was in um, Buttermere and their car park is eight pounds. The National Trust, not the National Trust, that's a National Park uh, car park. That's eight pounds and it only takes exact change. They really need to put card machines in these car parks if they're going to be charging that much money. Anyway, I've had to park a short walk away. But um, I'm here now, so let's go and have a look at the Bowderstone. If you do park at the National Trust car park, it's just up these steps here. Um, up in this area is the, uh, the car park and it's a quarter of a mile along this path to get to the Bowderstone. And there it is, that's the Bowderstone. About 10,000 years ago this giant rock fell from the side of the mountain, came down here and landed precariously on its edge, or what looks like precariously on its edge. It is of course very stable. And it's been a tourist attraction for something like 200 years. Um, the earliest reports are that the guy who lived in this farmhouse here, which is now uh, a bothy that you can rent. But the guy who lived there turned it into a tourist attraction and marketed it um, as a tourist attraction, sold souvenirs from his, um, from his house. And he had a ladder up the side, like a, a proper ladder, not like the steel steps that are there now, but a proper ladder. And he used to charge you tuppence or something to climb up the ladder to get to the top of the stone. No charge for climbing the stone today though. So when this guy's come back down, we'll have a little walk up. Here we are, up on the top of the Bowderstone. Right, time to get down. When you get right underneath it, you can actually yeah, start to appreciate how big it is and uh, get right underneath it. Ah. Here I am, underneath the Bowder Stone. I used to be able to, when it was first opened as a tourist attraction, go down the sides here and it was excavated further further down and uh, you used to be able to put your arm underneath and shake hands with somebody on the other side that was a good while ago now though it's all been filled in uh, since then safety reasons probably I've just said in my earlier bit of blurb that you couldn't shake hands under this stone anymore because it had been filled in. But if you look down there, see the gap? Get down there, get your hand in, and you can shake hands with somebody on the other side. The hole is still here. I thought it had been filled in, but it hasn't. It's still there. Some interesting thoughts about where the name Bowder came from for Bowderstone. Uh, there's one school of thought that thinks it's local dialect for Boulder. Boulder, Bowder, you can get that. And there's another school of thought which thinks it's named after the Norse god Boulder or Bowder. B-A-L-D-R. 
one of Odin's sons who was killed by Loki apparently which is probably why we haven't seen him in any of the uh, Thor movies but anyway Balder could be um, Cumbrian dialect is based on Old Norse language from when the Vikings were here so it could be something that goes back as far as that who knows That'll do then for today's visits to some Lake District stones. Started off at Castle Rig Stone Circle, uh, just outside the Keswick at the north end of Down Water, and finished off here down in the Borrowdale Valley at the bottom end of Down Water at the Bowderstone. Thanks for joining me, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.